tonight from a Bible prophecy standpoint. Biden, this is one of the most extreme Israeli governments I have seen. Uh, Biden also said that the normalization between Israel and Saudi Arabia is still a long way off. Tell me about this tonight, please, Dr. Woods. Well, it just shows you a very sad uh, state of affairs nationally now where um, Zechariah 12, verse 3, Zechariah 14, verse 2, both predict that all nations will come against the nation of Israel and the city of Jerusalem in the last days. Now, I understand all to mean just what it says, all. So at some point in time, even our um, alliance as the United States with the nation of Israel has to change. And, and you see it happening right before our very eyes. You know, Biden basically saying that uh, the current Netanyahu government is an extreme government. He says the it hasn't been this extreme since Golda Meir, and I'm I'm saying, excuse me, you mean Golda Meir, who won the Six Day War, and uh, received, um, uh, uh, excuse me, the Yom Kippur War, and in 1973, and received help from Richard Nixon, you know, during a time of need. You know, that government is is extreme. Uh, Netanyahu is extreme, and Netanyahu hasn't even been invited to the White House by this administration. Instead, they invite some low-level uh, individual. It would be like somebody dealing with the United States and not inviting the current administration, but inviting the, you know, the minority leader in the United States Senate. I mean, that's the equivalent of what the Biden administration is doing to Israel. And really what they're upset about is Israel is not playing ball related to this two-state solution meaning they want the nation of Israel to give up what's called the West Bank, biblically known as Judea and Samaria, to the Palestinians, which would reduce Israel's width by less than 10 miles and put her in an indefensible position. And well, so that's what the Biden administration is upset about. This goes along with this article right here. Let's show this one. UK, Australia, Canada, press Israel, reverse approval of new construction in Judea and Samaria. Yeah, and what are these nations upset about? They're upset that Israel is building on her own territory. You know, they're not upset, if you take a look at that third article there, they're not upset about the brainwashing of the Palestinians. Um, that third article shows a, uh, a, a young Palestinian giving a report to the Knesset talking about what's really happening in these Palestinian schools. Well, what is How, happening? What is really well, happening? Well, basically, um, they're taught to hate Jews. They're taught that if they die, you know, killing a Jew, they go into heaven, you know, to have these 72 virgins. They're being taught from grade one, first grade, uh, by terrorists. They're taught there's no need to learn Hebrew because the occupation, you know, so-called is, is temporary. So they're just taught one piece of anti-Semitic trash after another. And, you know, uh, it's, it's tragic that our country is involved in any way, shape, or form funding the Palestinians when this is the insanity that they teach in the school. So this explains the hatred of the Jewish nation in the region. And it fits with uh, Bible prophecy for the simple reason that the Bible, as I said earlier, indicates that all nations will come against Israel in the end times, and even the United States is sadly fitting into prophetic orbit. Indeed it is. Look at this. Russia, Syria to hold six-day military drills. This is uh, Jerusalem Post. Now, this is dated July 4th, so this has already happened. But this is significant prophetically from the Bible, from uh, Ezekiel, which I understand Benjamin Netanyahu has been in a Bible study studying that Old Testament book for years. He understands that book. Why is it significant to this new story? Well, it's significant because Ezekiel 38 and 39, you know, remember Ezekiel saw this 2,600 years ago. And he saw Rosh, who we think is Russia, coming from the remote north invading the nation of Israel in the last days. So here you have Russia on Israel's northern border as we speak. That's what, where Syria is. And you have the Russian regime running military, military ex exercises with the 
Syrian government. And so it's just amazing to me how the pieces of the chessboard are being set up uh, exactly like Ezekiel said, Russia coming down from the north, and now she's on Israel's northern border. Now, of course, we're not saying that what's happening in that news article is the invasion, but there's no doubt that it's setting the stage for that invasion, and that's the significance of the article. Uh, let's talk about this one here, the prophetic implications or the reason you bring it up. Here it is from the Daily Mail. Police will be allowed to spy on suspects by remotely activating their phones, camera, microphone, and GPS under new French law dubbed a snoopers charter. Why, why, why is a Bible teacher, prophecy expert, as an attorney, someone who studies these issues, why did you pick this new story to discuss with me tonight? Well, because the Bible in the famous or infamous Mark of the Beast passage predicts a surveillance society in the last days. And that obviously presupposes a certain level of technology. You know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, such a prophecy, a global surveillance society would seem ridiculous. But now we have the technology in place. It's called our iPhones cell phones, <laughs> GPS, uh, things that we carry around all of the time. And now France is basically saying it's going to access all of those in the name of cutting down on crime. Um, of course, that's the promise. What they're not talking about is what is going to disappear, which is personal autonomy, privacy. And we now have the technology in place where the government can regulate or monitor your life, I should say, from cradle to grave. And I believe that they're going to start using this technology for, you know, uh, tracking down criminals. Look at and this course, headline for the sake of time, because it fits with it. World Economic Forum says CBDC, central bank digital currencies, must be implanted under your skin if you want to participate in society. Now, this is according to Professor Richard Werner, according to this article, in the very near future, citizens, quote, will need to use the latest technology, in quote, such as CBDC chip implant in order to access their bank accounts. Did he really say this? Yeah, that's all uh, transcript uh, from statements that he's made. Apparently, he's been involved with the uh, World Economic Forum for a long time. And the article is very interesting because it ties together CBDCs something I know that your audience understands very well because you talk a lot about it, which will digitize all of our electronic transactions, which will put the rubric in place for a social credit score system like we have in China. And it also ties together inflation. He argues in this piece that inflation is being intentionally caused to disillusion people with cash and move us into this CBDC system. And then he says, by the way, the ultimate goal is to place this underneath your skin. And unless you're willing to play ball, he says you're literally going to be shut out of participating in the uh, global economy. I don't know what this gentleman knows about Bible prophecy, but it's almost like he woke up and read Revelation 13, 16 through 18 and then made a speech of some kind. Well, you know, it says to that he spoke at, uh, a con at the Am Amsterdam Science Summit 2022. Professor Werner gave a lecture on central bank digital currency. Show this, guys. Uh, at, and, the 2020, and the 2030 agenda. At the sidelines of this year's Amsterdam Science Summit, he spoke to Ivor Cummins about CBDCs and how high inflation has been orchestrated by central banks to further their agenda. Well, look at that. They're orchestrating inflation. That's something you and I know to be true because John Maynard Keynes of Keynesian Economics said by a continuous process of inflation, we can steal the majority of the people's wealth and not one man in a million will know what we're doing. And once they do that, people will turn to the digital dollars uh, and some tokens given in by the government uh, because they're starving and their money won't buy anything. And they'll be glad to take some tokens and give up their liberty and freedom for some government tokens and a chip. Uh, but this goes on to say, so Professor Warner proposed QE2, which allows the central banks to force the banks to create more money and push it into the economy. This would be accomplished with central banks buying assets, e.g. property, 
from the non-bank sectors. The money the non-bank sectors receive from the sale of the property would then be deposited into the sailor's bank, seller's bank account. When an economy is experiencing deflation, quote, that's how central banks can push money in the economy directly, end quote, Professor Werner explained. QE1 was followed and went on from there and on there. He says, you, quote, you have to think of CBDCs as a control system or permit system, not a currency, Professor Werner explained. Now, if this is really true, and this is what he said, here's what he said, quote, it's a conditional currency based on you actually getting that permit. Now, if you happen to be some kind of critic of government policy or a critic of central banks, this could be difficult. Or if you dare step out of the 15-minute city zone, you may be, or you'll find that, oh, my CDC is not working. Of course, these are things we've already seen in China. There's plenty of videos where somebody tries to use it to buy a ticket, and it doesn't work because his social credit scores are low, in quote. Um, Professor Warner explained that the central planners, as he calls them, orchestrate inflation to cover up changes to banking systems. Now, is this guy for this, or is he just being a critic of it? Uh, it seems to me like he's someone that has knowledge of it, but he has a conscience. And he kind of like Carol Quigley that I heard you talking about earlier yeah. is kind of uh, sp spilling, <laughs> so to speak. And he's sort of outlining, you know, the strategy that they've been that they're now using that they've talked about, you know, for many, many years, meaning that the economic inflationary situation that we are in is has been manufactured. It's to disillusion us. Its intention is to disillusion us with the cash system, push us into CBDCs, which is the framework for the social credit system. And then, by the way, it, this uh, chip that you have to have is going under the skin. We touched on this with Dr. Rob Lindstead. AI rob robots admit they'd run the earth better than, the, than clouded humans. This is, again, this conference is an artificial intelligence conference going on with the United Nations Summit uh, on Friday in Geneva. This was July 11th article, but this is going on now. UN's two-day AI for global, good global summit in Geneva. Tell me about this in closing. Well, it fits very nicely with what you were talking about with uh, Rob Lindstead. And it literally is a global uh, conference where AI robots are conversing with global leadership and basically saying we can run the planet better than you can because we're not controlled by human emotions. And so if you want planetary control to take care of the global warming issue, turn control over the planet to us. I, I feel like I'm watching something out of Star Trek, you know, when I read this article, but it just shows you that this AI, artificial intelligence, is totally getting out of hand. And it's to the point where it's reaching the point where it's going to be irreversible and it's going to move us into, you know, what Rob was talking about earlier, planetary control. Absolutely. AndyWoodsMinistries.org. AndyWoodsMinistries.org.